Hey junkies, it's Justin the Snap-On Junkie. How the fuck are you guys doing today? Uh, today I thought I'd do a quick little review of <clears throat> uh, this new tool I bought um, that's pretty badass. Uh, what it is, is the Diagnostic Thermal Imager here. And uh, I turned it on and got it all warmed up and stuff like that. You know, uh, if you can see that right there. So what it comes with is this quick little book uh, for the starter guide. Um, this thing has some pretty cool features uh, and stuff like that. So I've just been reading this book, uh, kind of quick overview of how it works and all that stuff. Uh, the run times and all that shit, it doesn't really say that in here. Oh, fuck. Well, anyway, I don't know the run times. Maybe I can try to find it out somewhere else. In between how long you charge it. You charge it with a USB port. You know, like uh, you just plug it in and everything like that. But this thing is a cool tool. And uh, I'm going to show you. You know like kind of the stuff that it has in the menu selection. And kind of how to use it. And then we'll take it out on the dump truck. And I'll start it up. We'll look at some temperatures on the truck and stuff like that. And show you that um, it changes pretty good. Hey junkies. So uh. Fucking thing. All right. So what this thing does is, is that it takes thermal imagers, you know, it basically this thing is like looking through the predator mask, you know. So uh, it has a whole bunch of these different selections and how you get to this stuff is, is you hit the menu button. Okay, and let's say you're working on some powertrain and exhaust and stuff like that. Um, you hit this yes button or the okay Whatever. So let's say that you're working on something and you're trying to diagnose a misfire. Uh, you know, instead of hooking up the scanner or whatever the fuck you got to do to diagnose a misfire, I really don't know. But anyway, uh, you would click, yeah, we're working on a misfire thing. So we click that. All right. Now we can check the coil and it tells you a known good one. So we can look at a known good. They're all evenly temperatured and all that stuff. Now if we want to look at a known bad, you can see here that it's a, it's not hot, right? Because electricity and running and, you know, sparking stuff creates heat. So, okay, so then we're looking at ours and we go, okay, ours kind of looks like that. I mean, I'm sure it's not going to be uh, perfect every time. So then how you get out of the menu is you just hit this no or exit button. And then it comes back, and then you can look at it, the exhaust manifold. Now, the exhaust manifold is what I would like to look at. So, like, you know that this is a known good one. They're all evenly temperatured, 356 degrees. Um, that's a good idle temperature. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's what most cars probably idle at, anywhere between, you know, about 250 to 300. I know the top fuel cars that I worked on, uh, the idle temperature was about 450 degrees. So then you go down here and you can see a known bad where you can definitely tell that the number two cylinder here is kind of jacked up. It doesn't look very right. So then you can go back out of that and it kind of gives you a tip, you know, tells you all that shit. All right. Now this is pretty cool because um, it tells you uh, bearings and pulleys. So you can kind of tell if you have a worn bearing, you know, you got idler, you got all this different stuff. So let's look at most people bitch about AC concerns. So we'll turn that uh, known good. We'll look at that. You know, it's a nice even heat, if you could kind of tell. And then the known bad one where it's kind of hot, where it's been rubbing and stuff like that. And then it's cold out here. That's no braino. So... You know, it's got a whole bunch of these different stuff in here. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are going to use it for, uh, I think, this body and electrical, like heated seats. So we can look at a known good one. You know, and you can see all the heated elements in there and stuff like that. And then we can scroll down to the known bad, where it's not very much. You don't see anything. Then you know you got a heated seat problem. But... I mean, it's got heated mirrors, you know. I mean, it's they have took a lot of pictures <clears throat> on here. You can tell if the window motor is bad. Holy shit. Wow. 
That's pretty cool. Oh my God, four wheel drive switch. Let's look at this. So I guess that's a known good one. And then this is a known bad where it's kind of shorting out and getting hot and all that stuff, which is pretty cool. You know, what do you do? Window seals? Holy shit, you must turn on the heat in the car and then that's fucking cool. <clears throat> you know, so it's got a whole bunch of this different shit, you know, we can go through here and uh, all this stuff like heater core, all oh, cooling seats. That's a known good one. They don't have a known bad on the on the on the uh, he, cooled seats there. That's fucking interesting. So you can see that this tool comes with a lot of stuff already uh, in it, you know. So now what I thought is we'd go out and uh, what it works like on the truck and all that stuff. We're we'll going to delete this picture. So <clears throat> we'll take this thing out there to the truck. We'll get it started up. I'll get it warmed up a little bit and then I'll show you this, uh, you know, how this thing kind of works and what you can do with it. I'm out here at the truck and you can see the engine here. Uh, we want to look at this air compressor. Maybe we have a problem with that, which we can put it on here, okay? And then wherever this little, like, uh, you can see that little dot on there, that shows you uh, how hot the stuff is. And uh, right there, we are 209 degrees, okay? We can come up, uh, we can go, we can go over here, and we can see, you know, that everything is you know about you know it jumps around here it's hard to get it to stay on one thing like you just got to use it and then no shit that gave you too much glare so there's the compressor now here is the front pulley up here and you know i don't see anything that sticks out in my brain or in my mind you know that that bearing's bad or anything like that and then what you can also see over here um, is the power steering lines. So you can kind of check, oh shit, you can kind of check to see that power steering line that comes down right there, you know, all that type of shit. And then you can take a picture of it. And what I'm using this tool for is really a monitoring, monitoring system to see if uh, everything that my gauge is in the truck tell you know I do have an AC problem in this truck and when we get ready to fix that we're gonna use this tool too so that's this side of the engine let's go over and check out the the other side okay now that we're on the other side here uh, you can kind of see that this thing cooled down a little bit and uh, I'm shooting on the uh, turbo here and it shows me that the the exhaust housing is 356 degrees and all that stuff. I can come down here and these lines running into the cab or the heating unit. Let me see if I can get zoomed in on that here. Sorry if this is so shaky. I'm trying to get this so the glare is not on it. So you can see that that's about 50 degrees, but it's still showing you up here. You know, you kind of got to like look and point and stuff like that so we can come over here hard to kind of do it this is some more of the exhaust stuff or oil temperature uh, this is the oil cooler and radiator stuff uh, right there you know now I have the truck turned off right now because it would be too much you know to uh, do all that stuff the tr it would be too loud for me to talk over but anyway uh, this is how you can check a bunch of different stuff um, to see if you have, uh, you know, what kind of heat you're getting and all that type of stuff. So I think it's a pretty cool tool, you know, <clears throat> everything like that. You know, I think that it's well worth, uh, I don't know if it's worth $1,400, bucks, but it's, it's definitely worth $1,000 if you can get it for that. I think it could save you some time. Okay, junkies. Uh... I hope you enjoyed the review of the thermal imager. Uh, you know, like, I'll turn it back on here. So I hope you enjoyed the review of the thermal imager. You know, you can see my face maybe through this. 
Yeah, like, uh, you know, now you guys are looking at me like the Predator would look at me, which is pretty cool. Uh, you could fuck with your buddies at work, you know, like if a hot chick comes into the thing, uh, you can you can shoot it on his, you know, cock and balls and see if he got a heart on, and then you guys could make fun of the new guy. Uh, if more experienced people in the shop have this tool, you know, um, <clears throat> I would not suggest, uh, you know, as a new technician, you would buy this. This is, this is kind of like a luxury item. And that's the way that I look at this. You know, I thought about buying this for a while and I kind of waited till, uh, my dealer had, uh, you know, he was willing to work a deal on it with me. It's been out a couple months. Um, on big ticket items, that's kind of how I like to do it is I wait till, you know, they've been sitting on the truck for a month and he hasn't really sold any and then I kind of make a deal on that. But anyway, uh, you know, I think this tool is going to help me uh, in the long run diagnosing some stuff. You know, we can be able to tell if our rear ends are correct and, you know, if we got a, you know, rear bearing that's kind of heating up on us or something like that, we can kind of look at all that stuff and kind of know what we got to do to fix it, you know, because it's really hard to kind of tell. And also hauling asphalt, I could take this with me. Uh, maybe when we do that video, when I teach you guys what it's like to haul asphalt, I'll take this with me and you can see how hot the asphalt is and all that stuff and uh, just simple things like that. You know, it's kind of more of a, you know, like I said, a, it's fucking a novelty, but it works pretty good. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I say that I am going to shoot the toolbox tour today. Um, I'm getting so many comments that everybody wants to see this thing all done. So we'll probably do that. Uh, you know, that video will be up sometime next week. Um, it'll be quite of a long one because this thing is pretty in depth. But anyway, uh, go to the snaponjunkie.com, purchase your stickers and hoodies. You know, you get 15% off of the hoodie sales with Baby Junkie. Uh, as the code and what else do we got all oh, tomorrow um, I should be releasing the crib video uh, me and my wife are gonna work on that tomorrow so everybody will get to see that and then maybe in a couple weeks we'll show you the special surprise that we got for everybody you know like comment subscribe uh, check out the other guys in the big six or the fabulous five again I really don't know you know everybody knows that Jay Young kind of retired uh, from doing YouTube oh, no. I guess, I, I don't know if it's forever or whatever, but I know that the rest of the group, we're, you know, we're kind of upset that he's gone. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I miss his videos, to be honest with you. I realized that he probably wanted to do it for personal reasons. I really don't know why. Um, I thought he was having a good time at it. I have a good time at it. I realized that, you know, you trolls out there, I'm not saying all of you are trolls, but the trolls out there get pretty, um, it gets pretty annoying. You know, hey guys, we don't have to do this stuff. We do this because we like sharing, you know, and that we want to teach people stuff, you know. And when you're out there just, you know, every time we put up something, you want to bash us, you know, just to get your 15 minutes of fame. It's really not fair to us, really, you know. And I realize, you know, there's a lot of people out there making YouTube videos probably because uh, they're seeing the success that we have as a group together. And it's really not, you know, guys, what makes us entertaining is really personality and uh, talking about things and opening up. As far as YouTube goes, I feel like uh, the six of us are pretty, we're pretty accessible. You know, uh, there's people out there that have our telephone numbers and call us you know, and shoot the shit and text message back and forth. And then there's some people that have our telephone numbers that, you know, uh, just call too much and don't, you know, know their place or whatever, if you get what I get, what I'm saying, you know, they're kind of annoying and that, that in itself can get time consuming, you know, like guys, we have regular lives and all that stuff too, you know, kind of is what it is. I guess you got to take, you know, it's, I look at it, you got to take the good with the bad, you know, if, 500 people like your stuff and two don't, well, then then fucking they're assholes, right? Fuck them. Aren't happy with their lives or whatever. But I just want to say, you know, like, you know, I miss Jay Young's videos. I keep looking every day to see if he'll, you know, come back out of retirement or whatever. I know he's bought some stuff because on the group text message, uh, there has been some purchases and things like that. But 
you know, it's disappointing. Hey guys, sorry I went on that rant. I just wanted to get that out there. You know, it's really like losing, not really like losing a family member, but it's, you know, this YouTube stuff is hard. And then when you have somebody else that, you know, retires for their own reasons, you know, that not only quit YouTube, but he kind of, you know, like left our group or whatever. Now I realize he's still in a group text message and we can call him and talk to him at any time, but it's still the point of like, it's like abandonment, really, is what I feel. But that's just my feelings on it. I don't know how the other people feel. I think some of the other guys are kind of like, we're just going to see what happens. But I have a feeling he might be making a uh, return sooner rather than later. Or at least I hope. You know, just for everybody out there. Maybe when things calm down, he'll he'll shoot another one. Or, you know, maybe one of us can go there and get him to shoot a video with one of us. Where he doesn't have to deal with it. Thanks for watching the video today. That's about all I got. Uh, have a fucking good one.